Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. As we conclude our series on honoring the saints, today's Do You Know question is, do you know why Pope Francis canonized Archbishop Oscar Romero on October the 14th, 2018? In a previous video, we spoke about Pope Paul VI, who was canonized also on October the 14th, as well as five other people who were canonized that day. Today, we will speak about Archbishop Oscar Romero, who was also canonized on October the 14th by Pope Francis. Um, Oscar Romero was born on August the 15th of 1917 and died on March the 24th, 1980. Uh, when he died, he was killed by a bullet while celebrating Mass in a small chapel in a hospital where he was living. Um, it's important to try to figure out what led to his death in this way. And so one of the things we know about uh, uh, Oscar Romero was that he was born in poverty himself. He came from a very large family, so he knew poverty very well. Um, he, was the, uh, he lived in El Salvador, and he, kn he knew that poverty. But in 1924, he, he, his desire to become a priest was finally accomplished. In 1924, he was ordained a priest and uh, was secretary to bishops and so on. And he tended to be a very traditional, uh, traditional priest who supported the hierarchy, uh, actually uh, a friend of the Opus Dei, actually, you know, a very conservative traditional group. He encouraged conformity and even, you know, was very reticent uh, to challenge, uh, uh, you know, people on social justice issues, especially political leaders and so on. So his image of himself and of the church was to be, you know, uh, fairly traditional. And, uh, and so uh, in 1970, uh, he was made an auxiliary bishop in El Salvador. And by 1974, he was made uh, a Bishop of Santiago de Maria in El Salvador. And it's during this time that his own traditional bent started to change a bit when he started to notice and was horrified at the, at the fact that uh, uh, some of the children in his diocese were dying because their parents couldn't afford to buy medicines for them. And he thought that this was outrageous, and especially the way the poor people were being treated and their uh, lack of access to good health care and, and their human rights and so on were being violated. So he began to be much more attuned to the needs of the poor and actually to promote a bit of, uh, started to formalize gatherings of the people to request and, and demand some sort of changes from the oppressive government and troops. And, and so um, he continued uh, this work and became more attuned to it, even though he tended to be still very fairly traditional. Um, on February the, um, February the 23rd of uh, 1977, he became Archbishop of San Salvador. Uh, and uh, this became a very important position for him to start to advocate his concern for the poor. Um, he had begun uh, before even to uh, have his homilies, uh, Sunday homilies uh, that he preached, especially with concern and attention to the needs of the poor, uh, to be broadcast on radios to all the peasants throughout the country who couldn't, uh, couldn't access uh, him or couldn't hear him and so on. And so that the message was gone uh, pretty much throughout the country through these radio broadcasts. Uh, uh, he, uh, things were getting fairly, fairly uh, desperate in, and bloody in El Salvador at the time that he became the Archbishop of San Salvador with, uh, you know, many of the people's rights being violated, land being conf confiscated, and many people uh, missing or killed on a regular daily basis. And therefore, uh, his homilies became even more strong and powerful with regards to concern for the poor and, uh, you know, uh, really decrying the, uh, the oppression of the government. In, um, 
in March the 12th of 1977, a good friend of his, a Jesuit priest, Father Rutilio Grande, was assassinated. And this kind of moved for, uh, Oscar Romero deeply and even moved him uh, more, became more convinced of the need to do something about this and to speak boldly to truth to power in some ways. And so uh, he continued his um, Sunday sermons directed at uh, the government and the oppression of the people and care and concern for the people. There were many, uh, many threats on his life uh, throughout all of this. Uh, so much so, in, in June of 1978, he traveled to Rome to report about the condition in El Salvador with Pope Paul VI. And uh, Pope Paul really uh, offered his encouragement to continue to be faithful to what he was doing and actually all of his support as well. So on March the 24th, uh, a Sunday of 1980, he gave his Sunday homily which was uh, a plea and, uh, to the troops especially to not obey uh, the, uh, the government's laws, but to obey God's laws and to stop the oppression. Uh, I'd like to quote just one little quote from that homily at that March the 23rd. Um, he pleaded that in the name of God and in the name of the suffering people whose laments rise to heaven each day more tumultuous, I beg you, I beseech you, I order you in the name of God, stop the repression. And it was, many people think that this might have been the jumping off point because the very next day during a, a mass that he celebrated in a small chapel in a hospital where he was living, um, he... Um, he gives a, a homily uh, just before a bullet will, will uh, kill him. That homily, this is a quote from, from the homily that he gave just before he was killed. Um, he talked about how many people do not understand. Uh, they think that Christianity should not be involved in such things. But to the contrary, you have just heard in Christ's gospel that one must not love oneself so much as to avoid getting involved in the risks of life that history demands of us, and that those who try to fend off the danger will lose their lives, while those who out of love for Christ give themselves to the service of others will live, live like the grain of wheat that dies, but only apparently. If it did not die, it would remain alone. The harvest comes about only because it dies, allowing itself to be sacrificed in the earth and destroyed. Only by undoing itself does it produce the harvest. And so these famous words were, were proclaimed by him in his homilies just a few minutes just before the bullet hit him and he was martyred for the faith. Um, you know, Oscar Romero, Archbishop Oscar Romero, was a living example of the Vatican II principle, law of concern and care for the poor and the oppressed. He was a great influence on a, a Jesuit in Buenos Aires at the time, uh, Jorge Bergoglio, who would become Pope Francis. And Pope Francis was so much influenced by him that uh, when he became Pope, uh, especially at the 35 years, uh, actually 38 years, of questions about his death and his canonization, uh, was very much convinced and moved towards canonizing uh, Romero as a Christian model of what it means to be a good pastor, a pastor who is very much attuned to his people. And therefore, uh, uh, Archbishop Oscar Romero becomes a living manifestation of a good pastor in touch with the people, being willing to give all for the people. And that is why Pope Francis canonized him. So I hope both these and the previous series help to explain a bit of why Pope Francis honors these saints and as models for Christian living. And I hope you'll return again to more Do You Know series questions as we continue to explore our faith and our traditions. Thank you very much.